Okay, welcome. We are going to talk about shutdown price and break-even price. And uh, this is kind of a simple example where we're going to calculate what the break-even price is and the shutdown price, and then kind of explore just a little bit of the intuition of how it works. Uh, and this is one where we're going to start off with like a some information about the cost of the firm, you know, um, kind of its cost schedule, its variable cost, fixed costs, and then we're going to go through the nitty gritty of how do you actually find what the shutdown price is and uh, exactly what the break even price is uh, without graphs, you know, just this table structure that I have here. Uh, and then given that information, um, we're going to calculate what the uh, shutdown price is and break even price. Um, this question is taken from uh, Krugman Wells Microeconomic Second Edition and the chapter that covers uh, perfect competition and the supply curve. Um, in the video description also, uh, I'll have links to additional videos on the topic, and then also um, if you want to skip ahead to like a specific topic, I'll show, uh, have a little link so you can skip ahead in the video um, in the description. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, this is starts with the following information. Kate's Catering provides catered meals, and catered meals industry is perfectly competitive. So perfectly competitive as in, um, you know, a lot of weird assumptions. One assumption is that, uh, you know, there are so many firms, and each firm is so relatively small that no firm can influence the price, for example. Um, also, uh, one assumption of a perfectly competitive industry is that the, the product that people produce is kind of standardized um, and commoditized. So, uh, you know, Kate's Catering can't really differentiate itself from other firms. So they're all kind of producing the exact same thing, which is a little bit unrealistic, but it's helpful to think. Um, okay, so Kate's fixed cost is this. It's $100 per day and is the only fixed input. So this is a, a money that Kate has to pay uh, whether she produces any meals or not, she still has to pay this fixed cost. Her variable cost consists of wages paid to cooks and food ingredients. The variable cost per day associated with each level of output is given um, below. So if Kate produces zero meals, uh, the variable cost is obviously zero. If Kate produces 10 meals, then the variable cost is 200. That goes to cooks and to you know, ingredients. Uh, for 20 meals, um, the, the variable cost is 300. For 30 meals, the variable cost is 480. For 40 meals, the variable cost is 700, so on and so forth. So first off, we're gonna calculate the total cost. Uh, the total cost is extremely intuitive. It's just adding the variable cost to the fixed cost, which is 100 here. So um, the total cost for producing zero meals is 100. So you know, if this firm were to shut down, they still Kate still has to pay this 100. The total cost for producing 10 meals is just 100 plus the variable cost of 200. So the total cost is 300. The variable cost for producing 20 meals is the $300 variable cost plus the $100 fixed cost, so $400, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so total cost, very easy, straightforward, um, great. Next up, we're going to need to calculate the marginal cost. So how do you find the marginal cost? Well, the marginal cost uh, are equal to this following equation here. So marginal costs are equal to the change in total cost. So how this changes divided by the change in quantity. So how a quantity changes. Um, so first off, note that when we talk about marginal cost, this value here, it's actually fitting in between two levels of production. So this level of production where the firm uh, produces zero has a total cost of 100, and then this level of production where the firm produces 10 and has a total cost of 300, there's going to be a marginal cost that kind of fits in between the two, you know, right about here. Um, so this value is kind of is the marginal cost of going from zero meals produced to 10 meals produced. Um, so how do we get this 20? So the marginal cost is the change in total cost. So total cost goes from 100 to 300. So that's 300 minus 100 is 200, divided by the change in quantity. So it goes from 0 to 10. So the change in quantity is 10. So it's 200, change in total cost, divided by 10, change in quantity, equals R200. The next level here, um, the marginal cost is the change in total cost. So going from 300 to, one, to 400, the change in total cost is 100, divided by 
the change in meals going from 10 to 20, so the change is 10. So the change in total cost is 100 divided by the change in the quantity of meals produced is 10, so the marginal cost is 10. And then similarly, uh, I'll do the next one. Uh, going from 400 to 580, the change in total cost is 180. Uh, it's just 580 minus 400. And then the change uh, in meals going from 10 to 30 is 10. So the marginal cost is the 180 divided by 10 or 18. And then you just follow that pattern to calculate the rest of the marginal cost. Um, and then once again, re remember that this marginal cost, it's going from this level of production to this level of production. Right, so this 20 marginal cost kind of fits in between the rows. Uh, and why do we care about marginal cost? Well, given a price, remember firms in a perfectly competitive market are price takers. Given a price, um, the marginal cost, if we set marginal cost, if we uh, produce at a level here, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, such that the price is equal to our marginal cost, uh, this firm is going to then be profit maximizing, or you know, if it's not doing well, it's going to be loss minimizing, right? So let's say the the price in this market is 22. This firm is actually going to maximize its profits or minimize its loss um, if it produces somewhere between 30 and 40. So this marginal cost kind of gives you uh, the firm's optimal behavior. You know, what is the the thing that the firm should do at this point? Okay, next we need to calculate the average variable cost of a meal. So what's the formula for average variable cost? It's equal to variable cost, which we have in this column over here, divided by quantity, which we have in this column over here. Um, so this first average cost, you know, um, we'll be dividing by zero meals, so that's going to give us not a real number. So the first, the first column with zero meals produced is going to just be blank, but we could calculate it for the second column. Um, so what we're doing is the variable cost of 200 divided by 10 meals. So that tells us our average variable cost is going to be 20 bucks, right? It's just 200 divided by 10. Um, the average variable cost for when we produce 20 meals is the variable cost of 300 divided by 20. So that's going to be, I think, 15. Um, the average variable cost when we produce 30 meals here is the uh, variable cost of 480 divided by... Um, quantity of meals 30, so that's going to be 16. That's 480 divided by 30. The average variable cost for 40 meals produced is the variable cost of 700 divided by 40. Uh, and then you just continue on in this pattern, um, grinding out you know all of the average variable cost curves. Um, this is going to be useful for our calculating our shutdown price. Um, but before that, let's calculate average total cost. So what is average total cost? Um, average total cost for a meal is we take the total cost, which we've calculated in this column over here, divided by quantity produced, uh, which we have given to us over here. So the first cell, again, is going to be blank because you know we're dividing by zero meals. So anything divided by zero is not a number. But the next column we could uh, calculate, it's going to be that 300 total cost divided by 10 meals. So the average total cost for each meal is going to be 30 bucks. Um, and the next one, so average, the, sorry, total cost is 400, and then quantity of meals is 20, so the average cost is just 20. Uh, the next guy here is going to be 580 of a total cost, and the um, quantity of meals is um, 30, so the average total cost is 1933. It's just 580 divided by 30. Uh, and then you could go on just grinding out the answer to the, the remaining ones. Okay, so what are all of these different average costs and marginal cost. So we talked about marginal costs and it's useful um, so that we know the quantity of production that this firm you know was going to want to produce at, right? If it sets um, it's going to be given a price because it's a perfectly competitive market. And if it sets its level of output such that the marginal cost is equal to that uh, price, you know, price is marginal revenue with perfectly competitive firms, then the firm is going to maximize its income. Um, with average variable cost, it's just literally what is the variable cost given the number of units you know produced. So uh, for let's say the you know the company is making ten dishes, right? 
with the variable cost of 20, that means the portion of you know the dish that it sells, that's the uh, the portion of the cost that of a dish that, that this you know restaurant, this catering company has sold, that's variable cost is 20. Um, the average total cost is a little bit more easy to understand. It's it's simply what are the total costs to produce this quantity. Um, so if this company, if this catering company produces 10 meals, then on average each one of those dishes that they serve is going to be 30 dollars. Similarly, um, if this firm produces you know 20 dishes, what's the average cost of each dish that it actually hands to a customer? The cost is 20 dishes. Okay, so let's get started calculating the break-even and the shutdown price. So how do I calculate the break-even price? What is the break-even price? So the break-even price is the price where this firm is making zero economic profits, right? It's not making money, it's not losing money. So the break-even price is the minimum of the average total cost here. Um, so first off, let's just write it down. So the break-even price for this firm is going to be um, 1933, uh, with that's at 30 meals produced. So let's just kind of walk through the reasoning here. Let's say that uh, you know the price of a catered meal is 20 bucks. So at 20 bucks, right, this firm is going to to produce 30 meals. Let's say if um, Let's say the, the price for a meal was 20 bucks. If this Purdue, Purdue firm produced 30 meals, then their average price for each one of those meals is 1933. So on each meal, it's making the difference between those two prices, so 20 and 1933. It's making on average, what is that, 67 cents each. So it has some economic profit um, at 20. Um, let's say that the price was $19, you know, for going below it. Um, at $19, um, and let's say that the firm produces 30. Uh, it gets in for each meal $19, but it costs the firm 33 cents. So you can see the firm's losing 33 cents per firm, for, per meal produced. So anything less than 1933, we know that the firm is having some negative economic profits. But at just at 1933, that's the, the price for a meal where this firm would just perfectly break even. So the break even price is the price that the firm makes zero economic profit. Uh, remember that's distinguished from regular profit. It's zero economic profit. Any price above that break-even price, then the firm's gonna make positive profit. Any, uh, if the market price is below that break-even price, then the firm's gonna suffer some economic losses. Okay, so now what's the shutdown price? Um, the shutdown price is the minimum of the average variable cost. So we look at the average variable cost schedule here, and we see that the minimum average variable cost is 15. So the shutdown price is going to be 15 bucks, and that's um, at a production level of 20. 20 meals produced. Okay, so let's talk about the shutdown price. The shutdown price is the price that the firm, you know, just ceases operation and goes out of business. Uh, and you can kind of you can see why. So let's say that the, sh the current market price for a meal was uh, something like uh, you know fourteen dollars per meal. Um, that means that at fourteen dollars per meal, you know, the minimum average variable cost for this firm is fifteen. So no matter what level of production this um, you know this this firm has like several levels of production available to it. But even at the level of production, 20, where it's minimizing its average variable cost, um, if the market price is $14, then they will never be able to overcome those variable costs. You know, they'll never be able to bring in an, enough money per dish to pay for the ingredients and pay for the workers. So there's just no way in which this company can make money because it can't even cover those variable costs, right? So surely, even in the short term and the long term, it wants to go out of business um, if the market price is anything less than this $15. Um, and then the next kind of thing is, you know, break even is pretty intuitive. Um, you know, you go to the average total cost, you find the minimum. Uh, obviously, if the market price is something above it, you know that this firm can make some money off that. Um, anything below it, it's making economic losses. 
The shutdown price is a little less intuitive, but kind of understandable. You know, if this firm can't can't sell a meal to cover the the variable costs of the meal, then surely it should not shut down. But the confusing thing to me, I think, is uh, the difference between those two prices. So what what happens between fifteen dollars a meal and nineteen thirty three? So let's say that the the market price is something like um, you know somewhere in between there, so eighteen dollars per meal. So at a price of eighteen dollars per meal, uh, what happens? You know. We know that the firm's making economic losses because the uh, minimum average fair total cost is 1933, but it's still covering um, its variable cost because the minimum average variable cost is uh, 15. So this firm's not going to shut down. It's going to continue to operate, and the key thing is in the short term, right? Uh, because in the short term, the firm has some of these fixed costs. So it's $100 per day, right? Um, even if the firm were to go out of business today and produce absolutely nothing, the firm still has to pay total cost of 100 right? So let's say at $18, um, let's say the firm decides to go out of business, well, it still has to pay that $100. So by staying in business, it's, it's actually working to minimize its losses. So if it stays in business and sells at $18 per meal, it covers its variable cost at uh, $15, and then has you know this three extra dollars per meal to contribute to those fixed costs. So you know let's say let's say it produces um, you know these twenty meals. The average variable cost is fifteen. So at a price of eighteen dollars, it gets like three dollars per meal. So three dollars times the twenty meals. That's in this extra cash of, tw of sixty bucks that it contributes to the fixed costs. So now the the only final loss at the end of the day is like forty dollars or so. But the main point is between the shutdown price and the break-even price, the firm is losing money, but it, it's still contributing to um, it's still contributing to those fixed costs. Um, in the short run, you know, it's stuck with the fixed costs. It has to pay them one way or the other. No matter, even if it goes out of business, it still has to pay its fixed cost. So it's going to produce. Uh, however, in the long run, in the long run, um, you know, fixed costs become more variable. So in the long run, the decision you know the firm made choose to go out of business um, when the, with a market price of less than you know the 1933 okay so hopefully that was a helpful introduction to um, you know break even uh, and shut down price uh, let's just go over the key facts that are useful to remember so key fact number one is what is the shutdown price the shutdown price is the minimum average variable cost so given a price below this, the firm's going to choose to shut down. Uh, given a price above it, the firm's going to produce at the very least in the short run. Right? Shutdown price is the minimum average variable cost. The break-even price is the minimum average total cost. Given a price below that, you know, if the market price is something below that break-even price, then the firm's going to make negative economic profits. Given a price above the break-even price, then the firm's going to make economic profits. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, you know, in the link, I'll link. Sorry, in the video description, I'll link to additional videos and resources. Uh, and thanks, and have a good day. Bye.